Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Oh my God, do we have something to talk about today? I'm sure that you guys are all just as sick of Matt Walsh as I am. Trust me, I did not want to make another video about him, but I have to. Like, I can't not make a video about this. If you're not aware of who Matt Walsh is, he is a YouTuber who consistently talks about how trans people aren't real, how we're, you know, influencing young kids to be gay, be trans. His main complaint about the trans community is that we are lying to kids, basically. <laughs> Telling kids that men can be women and women can be men and all this different stuff that nobody actually is saying. I mean, if by saying that women can be men and men can be women, you're referring to us saying that, you know, people born male can be trans women. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, that's not lying. That's just a fact. That's just how it works, bro. Allegedly, I feel like I have to say allegedly so I don't get in trouble. Allegedly, Matt Walsh and his crew has been going around under fake names trying to trick trans people into having a conversation or being interviewed for his documentary. He's like the most transphobic person alive. <laughs> like he's as transphobic as it gets. Any documentary on trans people that he is producing or a part of, you can be pretty sure that it is not going to be trans positive or, you know, affirmative of trans people. It's going to be saying that trans people are fake and liars and whatever, whatever, whatever. We're going to be looking at the thread and all the different information that there is, but allegedly his team has been reaching out to trans people, influencers, models, surgeons, all these different people to be interviewed for his documentary. Looking back into my emails, I actually have an email from them, but there are also claims from other people, such as literal 14 year olds that people from Matt Walsh's team has been reaching out to them in order to get an interview. Yes, the man that preaches on his channel consistently how trans people are lying to kids and attacking kids literally catfished a 14 year old to have them appear in his anti-trans documentary. This is a lot, it's too much. I post new videos every week here on my channel, so if you guys are not yet subscribed, go ahead and do that right now. I'll wait for you, go ahead. I'm gonna go super quick because we have a lot to talk about. Are you done? Thank you very much. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all those different places to be as up to date with me as possible. And yeah, with no further ado, let's get right into this thread. It's crazy. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to get a quick second to talk about today's sponsor, which is Fabulous. Fabulous is the number one self-care app to help you build better habits and achieve your goals. It breaks down scientifically proven healthy habits into very small tasks that are much easier to accomplish throughout the day. I've been on quite a self-betterment kick this year. Call it a New Year's resolution if you'd like, but I'm always just trying to better myself and this is a great way for me to stay on track of that. So you can choose between two approaches, a self-guided one for habit building or tracking, or you can do the guided approach, which will literally guide you through making these habits and getting them to stick. Unlike other self-development apps, Fabulous is gentler, it's more rewarding, it's fun, and it has more of a supportive approach. And if you're anything like me, negative reinforcement just does not work. Like I just need someone to be like, you're doing great, like just do your best. Fabulous allows you to set up a daily routine. They have programs to help you reach your objectives. They provide coaching to help you develop your motivation, which is so helpful, especially for somebody like me that struggles sometimes with getting motivated. So if you're interested in feeling healthier, more fulfilled, more productive, definitely check out my link down below. The first hundred people to click on the link get 25% off. So hurry up, go ahead. Thank you so much, Fabulous, for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into it. So this thread, like I said, was originally posted by somebody by the name of Ellie Ehrlich. Okay, wait, I just got a message from Eli. Their name is pronounced Eli. So sorry, it's Eli. Just forget I said Ellie, it's Eli. Their Twitter will be linked down below. So if you guys wanna check out the tweets for yourself, feel free to do that. Ellie is a PhD candidate who actually happens to be transgender herself. And allegedly Matt Walsh reached out to her and she, well, let's just get into the thread. I don't wanna, you know, spoil it. The first tweet of the thread says, so Matt Walsh's crew is trying to trick trans people into joining a fake documentary. His producer set up a whole front organization called the Gender Unity Project and tried to recruit me into his anti-trans documentary. Here's the wild story of how it went down. It started with an email from the Gender Unity Project a couple weeks ago. They claimed they were doing a film on the trans community and gave me names of well-known trans individuals and surgeons they had interviewed. It all seemed normal at first. And then they included the email that they received. The email says, Hello, my name is McKenna. I am the associate producer for an upcoming independent documentary on the topic of gender for Gender Unity Project. We're making a film exploring the real lives of people in the LGBTQIA communities and to shed some light on the topics of gender identity and gender fluidity in a way that will capture the attention of all Americans and be educational. I'm reaching out to see if you'd be interested in being interviewed for the film. If so, do you have any availability in the next couple weeks to sit down for about a half an hour for the interview? And then of course, in the bio, it says McKenna Lynn, she, her, hers. And if you know anything about Matt Walsh, he loves the pronoun thing. He loves when bitches put pronouns in their bio. Just kidding, he hates it. If there's one way to piss off Matt Walsh, 
put some pronouns in your bio and tweeted him. Ellie continues and said, I even talked to the producer McKenna Lynn Waters on the phone beforehand. She sounded like a well-meaning cis film graduate who was just curious about the trans community. She claimed the documentary was self-funded. I was suspicious because she had finished college recently, but I figured she was just rich because you know, who has that kind of money? Later, they told me the person they were interviewing in Chicago suddenly canceled. Then she offered to fly me to Arizona. Again, the surgeon they were interviewing wasn't responded to them. Oh my God, I wonder if it was my surgeon. I, I had my surgery in Arizona. Oh my God, I should reach out to them and be like, did Matt Walsh try to fucking interview you? Ellie continues then, finally, Nashville, where Matt Walsh lives. They sent me the release form this morning, which strangely didn't have the name of the company on it. So I looked up the Gender Unity Project. It used a registered agent to shield its owners. It's dubious, but sometimes registered agents simply make it easier to incorporate. Wait a second, let's take a look at the Gender Unity Project website. Okay, so this is what the website looks like. It says, we're making a documentary about transgender and LGBTQIA plus communities. This independent documentary will seek the truth Matt Walsh and his truth. Not just the truth. Sorry. <laughs> this independent documentary will seek the truth on topics of gender identity and gender fluidity. This documentary will explore the transgender and LGBTQIA plus movement, as well as medical care as it relates to gender and sex affirmation surgery. Under our goal, it says we aim to educate the public by leading into the insights of experts, professionals, activists, influencers, oh my God, that's me, and the real life experiences of those who identify as transgender. That's just like the key fucking word right there. If you have to say those who identify as transgender, you, mm -mm, you're not supportive of the trans community, I can already tell. You're just transgender, you're just a trans woman, okay? So when people say, oh, they identify as transgender, that's just them kind of being like, it's a boy that thinks he's a girl. Keep an eye out for people like that. That's pretty much it for the website. There's literally nothing else on here besides a little contact us button. And even when you click on the contact us button, there's no like, phone number, no email, no, like nothing, literally nothing. <laughs> Very just like, let's make a website so that people think that we're real. Eli says, then I looked at McKenna Lynn. Her name didn't show up anywhere. After some heavy searching, I realized she used her middle name in our emails. I found the IMDB page of her real name, McKenna Waters. And when you look at her IMDB, BD, what is it? When you look at her IMDB and go down to like the filmography, whatever, whatever, it says the Matt Walsh show. She was a production coordinator for 232 episodes of the Matt Wall show. First of all, he has that many episodes? Damn, girl, like get into it. I just say bravo to Eli, like bravo. Eli says, it turns out she's Matt Walsh's producer. That's not a red flag. <laughs> that's a gun to your face, literally. Not even like a, oh, that's kind of, maybe, that's like, bitch, run. She wasn't just a crew member for his show. She worked on over 200 episodes. I finally found her Twitter, which is now disabled. It's no longer up which features videos of Walsh and Shapiro doing their usual bullshit. And then there's a screenshot of two tweets from her profile. One says, Matt is starting his 30 hour trip back to Nashville. Please keep him in your prayers. No. Oh wait, are these retweets? Oh no, 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 no. these are likes. These are likes, my bad. This is from his wife. And she also liked a tweet that said, sad day when the truth is silenced. And then it was an image of the Dr. Phil clip. Oh my God, wait, apparently the Dr. Phil episode with Matt Walsh was taken offline, like it was made private or unlisted, it says. And I also read that it was no longer or just never uploaded to Hulu where Dr. Phil's episodes are. So, <laughs> Eli says, I decided to look closer into the Gender Unity Project. After searching its state registration number, I learned it was registered to Justin Folk, a far right documentarian who works for Matt Walsh and PragerU. Y'all know PragerU, I've done videos on PragerU before. Oh my God. I also looked up Justin Folk. He worked on a film called No Safe Spaces, which by the title, you can already tell what it's about. But basically when you watch the trailer, it's a documentary that features Dennis Prager, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, just like ridiculous ass transphobic ass people. And it's all about how their, their freedom of speech is being infringed upon and nobody wants to celebrate diversity of thought AKA they're getting in trouble for spewing the transphobic rhetoric everywhere, but whatever. But yeah, that just goes to show you what kind of documentary Justin Folk would be working on. <laughs> this year, Matt Walsh declared his assault on gender ideology. This is only the tip of the iceberg. Who knows how far he and his followers will go to attack, demean, and dehumanize trans people. Bitch, I, I hear you. My videos that I did on Matt Walsh, the comments, oh my God. Like if you left any of those comments, first of all, Hi, thanks for coming back to my channel. But like, this is the person that y'all idolize. This person that has been going around literally catfishing trans people, catfishing surgeons, catfishing 14 year olds, which I know I need to get into right now, but literally lying to children to film them and put them in a documentary, which they have no idea what it's even about. 
Actually, no, they were given an idea of what it's about, just a wrong idea, something that is just totally fabricated. This tweet from Matt Walsh says, this year I'll be waging an all out assault on gender ideology. We have been working on something that will make the Dr. Phil episode seem tame and boring by comparison. I can't say anything else about it, but it will change the conversation. We can win this battle. Oh my God, this man seems like he like literally wants to get his followers up and like start a war. Like literally just like, he said it himself. He's waging an all out assault on gender ideology. Eli finished her tweet by saying, so if you're contacted by these slimy assholes, don't respond. The last thing we need right now is another gotcha anti-trans documentary. Stay alert and take any media personalities with a grain of salt. And they say, we're the ones tricking people. Mic drop. We are the ones tricking people just by existing, but people that literally make up aliases and email 14 year olds, that's no big deal. That's not tricking anybody. Fallon Fox, who is a professional MMA fighter and also a trans woman, if you did not know, actually responded to this tweet. They reached out to me also. I even had a short video call with them to feel them out. They just seem sketchy and kind of ignorant of trans issues. Shocking. All of this confirms what I was thinking. Steer clear of McKenna Lynn. And now to get to the most insane part, like I said, his team actually reached out to a 14 year old as well. Debbie Jackson is the mother of a trans daughter who you may actually know. She was actually the trans girl that was featured on National Geographic back when she was younger. I don't really know how exactly how old she was then. She commented and said, thank you for the due diligence. I got an email inquiry asking if Avery and I would be interviewed because their website was so minimal. I started by asking the most basic questions. Are there any trans people involved in the production? Who are they interviewing? And if they will be including people who oppose trans rights? This is what she emailed me back. We have an extremely small crew consisting of about six people. I must be honest as I don't wanna mislead you. We're a small crew of cisgender folks. We all knew each other from prior projects. So we came together with a mutual passion for this project and topic with a desire to help the community. I have no problem necessarily with, you know, the crew being all cisgender, but it is definitely something that should be noted and taken into consideration. They continued and said, in regards to the subjects of our previous interviews, we've had a very wide demographic. We're actually international right now in Africa doing interviews, which has been such an incredible experience. So far, we've had interviews with high profile, non-binary and transgender identifying influencers. Again, that transgender identifying influencers. You can just say transgender, inf like what? You gave yourself away. And everyday people on the street as well. We are also working on setting up some interviews with high profile transgender athletes and celebrities. We've also made sure not to include any bigotry in our film. We don't want to contribute to any pain. The irony. We felt it was necessary to include some people on the other side so we don't get accused of being anything but partisan. The majority of our interviews have been from gender affirming allies and people within the community. If this was truly a production put on by Matt Walsh, it's not going to be this affirming, supportive documentary that's meant to make the lives of transgender people better. Like, we're not dumb. If you have to lie to people, if you have to lie to 14 year olds to get them to be in your documentary, doesn't that say something about your goals? Doesn't that say something about who you are as a person? If anything, it definitely discredits you being all upset about how the trans people are lying to children, which we're not, but I mean, you are literally lying to kids. You're literally making up a fake name and catfishing. I'd like to remind you, Matt Walsh's team is using multiple producers with false names to recruit for their fake trans org slash documentary. Do not respond to messages from Rebecca Therese. And now when I saw this message, I was like, wait a second, Rebecca, Ter wait a second, let me, and lo and behold, on October 12th, 2021, Rebecca Therese emailed me. Dear Samantha, I'm reaching out to see if there is any interest in participating in a documentary about the LGBTQIA plus community. As a leading, thank you, LGBTQIA plus influencer, creator, and model. Oh my, thank you. Thank you, babes. I'm blushing. Oh my God. <laughs> we would love to film an interview with you and hear your experience and insights for an independent documentary about transgender and LGBTQIA plus communities. As the leading voice in the community, it would be great to speak with you. This may just be me being nitpicky, but like, who types out the full acronym? That's just too much. LGBTQ+, like that's, that's more than enough in this, you know, casual conversation, especially the second time you say it. <laughs> we aim to educate the public by leaning into the insights of experts, professionals, activists, and influencers, as well as real life experiences. Particular attention will be paid to the proper use of language and gender identity terminology. I did not respond to this email. I don't really remember why I didn't respond. Usually when people email me to interview me, they send me like some credentials, not just like Rebecca, she, her, a resume, I don't know, something. So like I said, I'm not exactly sure why I didn't answer, but I'm glad that I didn't. Hopefully I would have figured it out, but 
I can't say that I would have. So yeah, just to reiterate Eli's point, Eli's message, be careful of who you talk to online. If you're trans or you're an ally, you know, be careful. Be careful who you talk to. Do you guys remember when that Abigail Schreer book came out and she had an interview from a trans guy by the name of Chase? And then it later came out that Chase was like lied to and it was like this big, you know, ploy to like get him in this transphobic book. Don't let that be you. Look at people's credentials, look at their resume, look at like, make sure that you're not gonna be set up like this. I actually messaged Eli and told her that I was going to be making this video and asked her if there was anything that she wanted me to highlight. And what she says was she was advising people to report Matt Walsh's content. Report his YouTube channel, report his Twitter, report all these different things because listen, I'm not somebody that's like, we need to take off all the trans soaps off of YouTube, off of Twitter, they need to go blah, 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 cancel culture, blah, blah, blah. But like, when you lie to 14 year olds, when you lie to kids, when you go on and spread like hate speech and say that you're going to start an all out assault on transgender people and on gender identity, gender ideology, whatever, whatever. For me, that's where it gets scary. This is no longer Matt Walsh is asking people what a woman is. He is very clearly wanting to harm transgender people. He literally said it himself that he's going to be starting an all out assault on the gender ideology movement community, whatever, whatever. That's trans people. So yeah, that's pretty much everything that has been out right now about this whole situation. It is very alarming to say the least. Matt Walsh has, I don't even know, 500,000 subscribers at this point. I don't know, I don't know what to say. Like I said, I'm going to be linking Eli's Twitter down below. So if you wanna check it out, if you wanna read more about this, she's been keeping everything up to date on her Twitter. So definitely check that out. But yeah, other than that, I think I'm going to go. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.